Johnny May here and welcome to this week's quick tip where I'm gonna teach you what I think is the most important exercise if you want to master the stride piano style. Now a lot of students think that in order to play stride piano, you just jump from the root to the chord and that is stride. And indeed that is stride piano, but there is so much more that you can do to make the stride style more interesting. Now in today's lesson, you're going to learn the five essential components of stride piano, including how to color your left hand chords, how to use tense in your left hand, how to target chords, using the chromatic concept. We're gonna talk about how to color your chords in the right hand and how to fill in the right hand with ornaments like the roll. So if you like the stride piano sound and you want to be able to accompany singers or arrange songs in this style, this lesson is for you. So let's go ahead and dive right into the lesson. And what I first wanna do is I wanna teach you this chord progression. It is a very important chord progression to learn. And the basic idea, is we're gonna start on a C chord, and we're, by the way, here in the key of C major. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna target all of the chords, or the diatonic chords that come from the key of C. So we're gonna target the D chord, we're gonna target the E chord, and actually, instead of playing E minor, we're gonna treat this as a C over E. So it's like an inverted C. Uh, we'll target the F major, the G major, the A minor, and the B diminished, okay? These are all diatonic chords. They're all chords that come from the key of C. So how do we do this? Well, one of the most important things that you wanna do in stride piano is to use diminished chords to get to each of those target chords. So when we go from C to D, we're gonna use a C sharp diminished to get us to the D minor. Okay, C sharp diminished seven. And specifically, you can use the diminished chord just a half step below the target chord. Okay, and we're gonna do this for each one of our notes. So when we go to the, the C over E chord, we're gonna use a D sharp diminished seven chord. It's all minor third intervals to get to our C over E. Okay, and then we need to get to F. Well, let's use E diminished seven to get to the F. How would we get to the G? The G is the next chord in the key of C. Well, let's use F sharp diminished seven, and that gets us to G. And then we wanna to get to A minor, so we'll use G sharp diminished seven. That takes us up to our A minor. Uh, B flat diminished seven, or A sharp diminished seven. Again, all minor intervals, and this takes us to a B diminished, and the way we're gonna do it in this exercise is we're gonna treat this actually more like a G over B, which is a little more common than playing a B diminished, okay? So this is kind of the basic idea behind this exercise, and in a few minutes here, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to use this idea on the full exercise, but first, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. All right, so we've established this idea where in songs or kind of any music that you're playing, you're gonna see a lot of these diatonic chords. And the way that stride pianists like to get to each of these chords is by using the lower neighbor diminished seven chord. Uh, by the way, a lot of times stride pianists will use the upper neighbor diminished seven chord. For example, if I'm going, you know, Okay, if I'm going like to my D minor chord, you can use the upper neighbor diminished seven chord, E flat diminished seven to get into the D minor seven chord. Okay, so it kind of works both ways, but the way we're gonna primarily use it in today's lesson is as a lower neighbor concept, okay? So that's the basic idea of this exercise, and I would encourage you to kind of practice each of the chords, uh, just using simple diatonic chords, and then using the chromatic, lower neighbor diminished seven chord to get to each of these chords just as we practiced here, okay? So here's a kind of a quick review on this, going through each chord, and then we're back to C, okay? Now, you wanna color your chords. These are very simple chords, and when you're playing jazz piano, and especially if you're playing stride piano, uh, you do not wanna just play major or straight major or minor chords, you wanna color your chords. So here's some very cool ways to color your chords. C6 is the first chord I would use here. Instead of a C major, I would just add an A to it to kind of color it here. C sharp diminished seven, we play straight. A D minor seven, 
okay, we're basically adding a seventh to this chord to make it a little more jazzy. D sharp diminished seven. C6 over E, it's a C6 chord, E's in the bass. Okay, again, we're just coloring our C major chord, adding the sixth to make it a little more jazzy. There's our E diminished seven. F6, okay, it's an F major chord. We're adding the sixth note from the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, to color this chord. F sharp diminished seven. Our G chord, right, that's a normal G. We're gonna make this a G6, just to kind of color it. Uh, you could make it a G dominant seven if you'd like, but we're gonna go G6 on this chord. G sharp diminished seven, A minor seven. Okay, again, we're adding the seventh to all of our diatonic chords to make them sound a little bit more jazzy. B flat diminished seven. Then for that last chord, G7 over B, or G major over B, we're gonna add the seventh to this, okay? Just to make it sound a little more jazzy and it'll, it'll pull it a little bit more back to that C chord because dominant seventh chords have a really nice pull back to the original chord. Okay, so G7, that's gonna be this chord. Now our B diminished chord, that's our lower neighbor diminished seventh chord, that's gonna get us back to our C uh, chord or C6 in this case. And then we just throw a quick G7 in to turn us back around on this chord progression, okay? So we've talked about a few things here. We talked about diatonic chords. We talked about how the lower neighbor diminished seven chord leads us to each of these diatonic chords. You can think of it as the connecting tissue of stride piano. It's the way that stride pianists connect chords, or it's at least one of the ways that stride pianists connect chords is this lower neighbor diminished seven concept, okay? So once you understand the basic chords and why we're using these chords, let's go ahead and talk about this particular exercise and how to practice it. I do wanna start with the left hand, and for the left hand, we're basically gonna be doing kind of two things. First, we're gonna be jumping from the root up to the chord, which is very common in stride piano. If you listen to any stride piano, you're gonna hear this, this oompa, right? Oompa, oompa jump. So that's the first thing. The second really big thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use tenths in the left hand. Now you can certainly jump from one note up to the chord, but most stride pianists will use a tenth interval uh, to harmonize the bass note. Now for a lot of students, tenths are hard to reach. So if you have smaller hands, that's okay. You do not need to play the tenth at the same time you're playing the root. You can simply roll your tenth. Okay, see what I'm doing here? I'm separating the notes, okay? So these are the two really important things that we're gonna be using as we practice this exercise. We're using the tenths in the left hand and we're using the root chord or the oompa technique to get that authentic stride piano style. So here we go, we're talking just about the left hand right now. And first chord is a C chord. C to E, and you can simply roll this, okay? Da -da. I'm separating these notes. I'm gonna go to a C6 chord inverted. Okay? So I've got the E on the bottom, G, A, C. It's a first inversion C6 chord, okay? You wanna keep your chords right here in the middle of the piano. You could use a different inversion. You could use that, or you could even use that, but generally I like to keep my chords between a C and a G. If you go lower than a C, it's a little bit too muddy. And if you go above a G, it just sounds a little too bright. Okay, so I would highly encourage you to keep your chords in this range, okay? So C, uh, if you can play the 10th together, great. If you have smaller hands, just roll it. There's the C6 chord. C sharp diminished, there's the 10th, okay? Um, that's pretty hard for me to reach, so I just roll that, okay? And then for the chord, that's a good option. Uh, you could go for that if you wanted, but I don't like playing my thumb on the C sharp, so that's probably the best option for you. D minor, D to F, okay? Um, you might be able to reach it. If not, just do the roll. Here's my D minor seven, okay? Simple chord. You could use a root position D minor seven if you wanted, or you can even go up there if you really wanted. I would encourage you to keep the chords as close together as possible. So, you know, C sharp diminished is there, right? D minor seven is there. These chords feel like they're connected uh, from one to the other, okay? So that's the D minor seven. D sharp diminished seven, there it is. D sharp, F sharp, okay? 
You can roll it, you can play it together. There's the D sharp diminished seven, you're doing a great job. This is C6 over E. There it is, E to G. Okay, there's the chord C6. Same chord we played earlier. Okay. Uh, e diminished, there it is, E, G, B flat, C sharp. F major six, there it is, F and A. You can block it, you can roll it, it's up to you. There's the F6 chord. You could use a lower inversion if you wanted. I like this one the best. F sharp diminished, that's a tricky one to reach, okay? I can barely reach that, so I tend to roll this chord. Okay. F sharp diminished seven, you're doing a great job. G6, here it is, not too bad. By the way, a quick little trick to reaching a 10th, if you're struggling with this, is to actually get your wrist down off of the keys. A lot of students who were classically trained were often taught, you know, keep our wrists up high and keep our fingers up here, but when you're playing really large intervals, you actually gotta get down off of the key. So get way down here so you can grab the edge of the key, and you might be surprised to find out you can reach a 10th, but again, you're just way off on the edge of the key. So G6. I like to use this chord. G sharp diminished seven. You can use the same uh, chord there, just altering that one note in the middle. A flat where you can put it up there. A minor seven. There's our 10th, sounding great. That's our A minor seven. Again, you can use that one. B flat diminished seven. Probably go for that one. Want a little bit of a darker sound, or if you want a brighter sound, you could bring it up there. Okay, We've got different options. Uh, G7 over B, we're gonna play it like this. G7, we'll use a straight G7. You could put the nine in if you wanted, make it a little jazzier. I'm gonna play it straight. And then B diminished, we're gonna play it like this. You can use this one, you can use this one. To our C, it's gonna be there. Again, you can roll these tents if you can't reach them. There's our C6. And then we're gonna throw a quick G7 at the end to turn us back around to the C chord. Now, I do wanna mention that you can harmonize these tenths. That's uh, fairly common for stride pianists. If you really wanna go for some big chords, for example, on the C chord or the C6 chord, you could put the fifth in the middle. That's not uncommon at all. It's quite a stretch, but like C sharp diminished seven, you could put the seventh in there like that. D minor, you could play like that, or sometimes stride pianists will grab the seventh. Okay, that's really a stretch, and it's especially hard when you're jumping, <laughs> right? It's almost not worth it for the amount of work that it takes, but if you have really big hands, then you can try to grab a middle note for each of these chords, a C sharp, or rather D sharp diminished seven, there's the seventh of the chord. Uh, C six over E, we have, you can add that one in the middle. E diminished seven. F6, you could also put the six in like that, that's cool. Again, really hard to reach, F sharp diminished seven. This is only if you, have, if you have really big hands, you can try these bigger chords. There's that G sharp diminished seven. A minor seven, you could try to grab the seventh or the fifth in the middle. B flat diminished seven, there's that seventh there. Okay, really nice chords. Uh, G7 over B, that's gonna be one of our final chords here. There's the B diminished, and then the C chord, like that, okay? So again, you can harmonize each of these bass notes. By the way, I do wanna mention the lesson sheet music you're seeing up here on the top left of the screen is downloadable and printable over at pianowithjohnny.com. You can also change the key of this sheet music with the click of one button, so you can practice this whole exercise in any key. So I'll put a link to the sheet music below. Okay, so that's the basic idea for the left hand here. We'll, we'll talk about the right hand in a minute, but what you wanna do is you wanna get some momentum on this left hand. Now I mentioned you can go root, chord, root, chord, root, chord, root. That's pretty hard to play unless you have bigger hands. If you have smaller hands, you can roll the left hand. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Notice that I'm separating the bass note from the harmony note, but the really important thing here is the rhythm of it. When you're hitting the bass note, you're actually coming in before the downbeat of each chord. So instead of going, you know, one, two, it's and one, and two, and three, four, 
Does that make sense? So on beats one and three, you're actually hitting the tenth. You're not hitting the root. I'll play it again. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, right? Beat three, and four, and one. This is very important for stride piano. A lot of students make this mistake when they're trying to play rolled tenths is they'll put the bass note on the beat and then they'll put the tenth kind of off the beat and it doesn't quite sound right. All right, we're gonna talk about the right hand, but before we do that, if you're enjoying this lesson, I do wanna encourage you to check out our stride course over at pianowithjohnny.com. You'll learn how to take the tune after you've gone and arrange it in the stride piano style. I'm also gonna teach you how to solo in the stride style, so I'll put a link to that course below. All right, let's talk about the right hand. How do you practice the stride style in the right hand? Well, the first thing to do is you wanna take each of these chords and and you want to find a melody note that works with each of these chords, okay? And a really great note to start on is the third of the chord, the E, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna harmonize that E with the full chord, which is C6. There it is, okay? C sharp diminished seven, same thing. We're gonna use that E, it's the third of the chord, so that stays stationary. D minor seven, we're gonna come up. Again, we're using the third of the chord. D sharp diminished, using the third of the chord, kind of just shifting things up. Let's continue along in the sheet music. C6 over E. We're just using an inverted C6 chord. There's the E diminished seven, doing a great job. Uh, F6, there's, there's our chord. Again, we're harmonizing the third of the chord, one, three, five, six. F sharp diminished seven. G6, we're gonna play here, doing a great job. G sharp diminished seven. Again, these are just simple inversions of these chords, but we wanna keep the third on the top because it creates a nice little melody that moves up the piano, okay? A B flat diminished seven, you're doing a great job. G7 over B. B diminished seven, and then our C chord at the end. For the final chord, G7, just a little turnaround chord. Kind of play this a little more jazzy. Instead of playing a G7 like that, we put the nine in, okay? Make it a little more colorful. Okay, so that's the idea for the right hand is we're basically uh, just taking these chords, we're harmonizing each chord with the third of the chord, and we are putting the chord tones just below it. Okay, so th these are the colors that you use in the right hand. Now, if we were to play these right hand chords with a left hand stride, it would sound something like this. sounds really nice, but you want to fill in the right hand. And there are a lot of ways to create fills in the stride style, but one of my favorite techniques is the roll technique. Okay, it's a really nice sound and it's a great uh, technique that you can use if you are accompanying songs or if you're arranging songs in this style and you want to create some interesting fills in between your melody notes. So here's how the roll works. Basically, after you strike your chord, you're gonna roll down the chord. That's it, okay? Strike, that's twice, roll. And then on the C sharp diminished, strike twice, roll. D minor seven, strike twice, roll. You're literally rolling down every note of the chord. Okay, that's the basic idea behind the roll. Now, there are a lot of different rhythms that you can use or different places in the bar where you can use the roll. For this particular exercise, we're gonna keep it very consistent and we're gonna do this pattern each time where we, where we go chord, chord, roll. Okay, chord, chord, roll. Chord, chord, roll, chord, chord, roll. Does that make sense? So that's gonna be the basic idea here. Now, if you wanna learn how to use rolls in your stride piano arrangements, check out our Ode to Joy stride course. Okay, let's talk about how I, I would recommend putting the hands together. So let's start with the left hand. We'll go nice and slowly. We'll do the rolled 10th on the C. 
That's together on beat one. One and two and. Okay, this is really important. When, whenever we come down on the roll, it lines on the and of beat two and the and of beat four. One and two and three. And now we have our C sharp diminished seventh chord. One and two. Now we're anticipating the D chord. One and two and. Now the E flat diminished seven chord. Three and four and. We're anticipating the C6 over E chord. One and two and three. There's the E diminished seven chord. And four and. That's gonna line up there. Now the F6 chord, one, and two, and three, and four, and. Okay, you're doing a great job. G6, one, and two, and three, and four, and. A minor, one, and two, and. B flat diminished, three, and four, and G7 over B, one, and two, and B diminished, three, and four, and, and then the C6, one, and two, and, and then the G7, three, and four, and. And that takes us back to the C chord. Okay, does this make a little bit of sense? So this is one of the most challenging things for students is getting the rhythm of this particular style and especially getting the rolls in with the broken left hand tense. You really wanna make sure that you are correctly lining up. If you're looking here at the lesson sheet music, on the and of beat two, that lines up on the and of beat four. Okay, that's, those are gonna be very important landing spots to make sure that you're playing this with the correct rhythm. Okay, let's go ahead and play this with the included backing tracks. This lesson comes with five different backing tracks at different tempos, which you can download at pianowithjohnny.com at the link below. So let's go ahead and play this at the slowest tempo, 60 BPM, and then we'll gradually increase our speed. All right, here we go. Here we go. F, F sharp. Right, you're doing a fantastic job with this and the goal here is to increase your speed. So let's go ahead and play it at a faster tempo. We're going to skip ahead to 100 BPM. So here we go. Go ahead and try playing this with me. Here we go. Very cool. Now before we play this at the final tempo, we're gonna do this at 140 BPM. You might be wondering, hey Johnny, this sounds really cool, but how do we actually use this in tunes? And so my recommendation is to pick a tune that you really like and try using some of these techniques on that tune. For example, a great tune that you could try is a tune like Blue Moon. Blue Moon, I saw you standing and you can use these rolls as an accompaniment technique. Or you could use them to fill in the gaps of the melody. All right, let's go ahead and play this exercise at the fastest tempo. This is the fastest backing track that you can download at 140 BPM. Here it is. Hey 
Hey, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 1,000 step-by-step lessons in jazz, blues, theory, technique, and a ton of other styles, plus we do live events for our students. So go check out Piano with Johnny, and I'll see you in the next one.